the scrap yard I do go, and the one thing that I forgot the last time, gloves, gloves, take your gloves to a scrap yard. My hands are dirty already, but um, they get really bad at the scrap yard, and especially, I really don't want to ruin these, these are like new. They're cheap, but they're new. I hate ruining gloves. So I'm going to try to be careful with what I grab and hold on to, um, but here we go to the scrap yard. Here we are at the scrapyard. And so I wish I knew what to do with this thing. Right there. That thing's super cool. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. Okay. Yep. Nope. So I kind of, I saw these guys. I really want to grab a few of these and maybe make a roof rack for my Jeep. If they're bent right. Oh, they're heavy though. They're kind of all bent awkwardly. So they've got kind of a, a bend down, and then they have a bend over, but it's not a 90 degree to the other side. Let's see if we can find some 90s. These are all, like, way too heavy, though, for the roof rack. It's long enough, but man, these are heavy. That's still really heavy. Damn. Okay. Let's go to the bins. We have springs. I could use the springs as a backing, but I really don't want to. I really like the bolts. Oh, how cute is that? That's like a jungle gym kind of a thing. More springs. Get a lot of springs. There's some sheet metal. Actually, for my, um, huh, I don't know, I might take this because for my, uh, lapidary, lapidary box, this would be a great box to start with. All I'd have to do is cut this bottom piece and weld a new one on. I might hold on to that. Put that down. There. That's a really cool gear. matching set of lamps. Gears as their heads. Okay, so we're gonna set these aside. In the spray. There we go. Okay, we need to be looking for bolts. That thing's cool. I'll come back to those gizmos. I'm not too sure yet. Bolts. Bolts. Need a bolt. Need a bolt. Bolts. I need bolts. They had a whole box of bolts the last time I was here. Yay! The bolt bin. I want the biggest, longest ones that they've got. That thing's really cool. Huh. So are these things. Isn't that neat? There's no way of hiding the wire for that. Now, if I get lamp bottoms with these would be really cool. Those little guys. Okay. I'm going to dig through the bolt bin. And as you can see, there's 
tons of more bins to go through. Okay, I'm on to some other bins. I did find some more gear heads for the lamps and another base. So I've got three of these now. I don't think I see anything else. Nope. I might be walking past these really quick. Doesn't that look like a uh, camshaft? Isn't that crazy? It's solid though. There's no lobes that are different from each other. So I know it's not a camshaft. All right, let's come over here. Look at the other piles. Now this is the scrapyard in Clackamas. else that I can see. So I'm going to come over to my hoard. This is what all I found. So I am taking the bin with a bunch of those bolts down there and these sprockets. So I'm going to do the weigh-in thing here in a minute and see what I've got. I am in the garage today. I'm going to be working on a piece that is a lamp. It's put together with just a bunch of generic parts from a scrapyard. Um, I'm using a very large chain a sprocket for the, the base and some sprockets for the where the, the lights will hang out of. So um, it doesn't look like much right now, but believe me, it'll look pretty good. And I'm kind of putting it together as I go. Um, I don't know what's going to work, what's not going to work, so you may see me change some stuff, you may all of a sudden see something change. Um, but yeah, this is all scrap stuff from the junkyard, or from the scrapyard. This is the garage, that's my nice little welding bench area, and that is what I have so far, and I'm going to zoom out so you all can see me. This is the body of the lamp. This is a chain, and this will weld onto the base, which is this sprocket guy. This guy I will cut eventually, but I really need to work on the chain because it's got a ton of rust on it. Um, I'm just sanding it up just to make it look a little pretty. So I think I did this side first, so I'll continue with this side, and then I'll start to work on... Um, cutting off that. And these, these little sprocket guys here, these are going to be where the light comes out. So I'm going to have a light coming out of here. There's going to be two of these. Well, there are two of these. So safety first. Goggles and earmuffs. And just grinding it right now to make it look pretty because the chain's pretty rough. <laughs> grinding off these ends and at least sanding on the top parts you can see that there's more rust in here there's quite a bit of rust down on this side right in here in these mid chains I'm gonna have to take a wire wheel to that to clean that up um, but for now at least the top parts and I was able to hide some of the if I burnt through it um, some of the welding areas 
Yeah, there's a lot of like junk up in here that I'm not too sure how to clean that. But from a side view, it'll look good. From the front view, not so much. So I don't know if I'm gonna hide that or what I'm gonna do. But for now, she's cleaned up. I'm gonna cut this top area and weld it so that it has, well, you'll see. It's hard to explain. Get Jesus up to a cutter. Cutting head. together. This is her. Outside shot of it. So on the base, this big guy has a, a piece on it underneath that is only yay around. And so with the weight, it's tilting a little forward. And actually, if we get you guys a good side view of the piece, see how it tilts a little bit back? like this in order to compensate for the weight up here with these with these sprocket guys this is where the bulbs are going to hang out from underneath so in order though to keep it from teetering one way or the other i needed some weight on it so i added these just as decorative designs i'm going to add these actually these are the next welds this piece and that piece and it actually matches because these are, you know, teethed gears with the chain with the gear lights. So my next project will be making a lamp out of this threaded stuff. I don't know how to put a backbone on it, but I think that would be a pretty cool base. I cut a corner out of that and used it for a... Um, knife holder in our kitchen but i love this using this as a base would be fantastic so i might be able to find another one of those at the scrapyard which i will visit today and i will film while i visit or i might be using springs as the the neck for that 
because I'm trying to figure out how to weld that together to make it stiff. I could put a spine on it all the way down to weld it to make it stiff, but I don't think that's going to be enough. I think I'll need a piece of steel either on the inside or on the outside to stiffen it. And then I've got smaller stuff for the, the lights that will dangle off of it. So that's the next project. But this one, we are adding these sprockets to the bottom to give it some weight. So this is quite a bit more stable. Added that extra arm and it doesn't look bad. I mean, it still gives the illusion of kind of the chain just doing all the work. Okay, now I think I can move it to the end of the garage so I can get it prepped for paint. It's kind of a bummer. I can't really figure out how to, well, I need to clean this weld, but how to clean the welds on the inside. I clean the outside of the chain. Of course, you know, this rust and stuff, I'm going to actually um, take a wire brush to it before I paint it um, and get some kind of a conversion paint to convert that. But I forgot I do need to grind that down because that's a little ugly. But I ground down the attachments there and got all the debris off the base. So time to grind that down and move her. Let's see if I can move her. That actually works. So we need spray paint and quite honestly, I'm just like looking for the cheapest spray paint. I kind of like the idea of doing the, the metal, but gosh, eight bucks, crap. I don't really want to do Krylon because it doesn't stick, I don't think as well. Blues, it doesn't seem right, like a gray would look good. Gloss. I really, do I want it glossy? We'll do one of these, the glossy and one of the non-glossy ones. We'll just see how those work. So this is like the lamp department at Lowe's, and as to why they do this, I would never know, but for the kit, $19. I don't want to spend that much on the wiring kit. Well, they do have a clear cord, though. How long is the cord? Hmm. Does it say? 12 foot. That would do. And it's got the little switch on there. Darn. I might actually have to get this. I'm gonna grab this and then go look. Oh, they do have. Now, as to why these are so much cheaper, tell me why. $9, $3. No shit, Sherlock, I'm gonna get the $3 one. Oh, because I've. No, I don't have to solder shit on. I just screw things down. Yeah, isn't that weird? And let's go look in the lighting, or yeah, the wiring section too. Light bulbs. And what I want is like an Edison looking, Edison looking bulb, but I don't want to spend too much money on it again. Cheap Edison bulbs. Vintage style, 16 bucks for two bulbs. What the hell? Now these are 
kind of cool. That's kind of what I want. Holy shit, $10 a bulb. Give me a break. Oh, these are 13 also. These are 40 watt basic LED. Shit, I can't believe the prices on some of these. Look at this. $35 for that. It's a bulb, people. They burn out all the time. Those are dimmable. These are dimmable. Bigger glass, smaller glass. We'll do the bigger glass. See, now this is the difference. So in the lamp section, you saw the prices, but over here in wiring, we have the same little porcelain end for $4, so that's not a good deal. We have one for $2. And it's even got the, the screw head thing on it. And let's see what kind of cords they have. 15 feet. And only $4. Doesn't matter if it's clear. Let's get two of those. As opposed to buying this thing for like 19 for the kit. Because the only thing I need is the switch. And let's see, they've got switches here. Switches. There we go. Three dollars. So I need two of these. And I don't need the kit anymore. Yep. Okay, so I have got... My cords, all I'm going to do is just cut this at the end. These are 15 feet, so I've got more length. Got my switches. Got my lamp ends. And I think that's it. Oh, I'll just get a roll of good tape. Okay, so here is the lamp. And I'm going to start spray painting this thing. Give it a bit of a different color, maybe a gray. These are the two different colors that I've got. I've got a shiny gray, and I've got a light kind of a matte gray, and I think I'm gonna do a mix of the two. So we shall see how that goes.
as I run into things. She's officially kind of done. I think that looks pretty cool. I did get a switch for the cord of one of those little on-off trolley switch things. Um, but that seems to be for a smaller cord. So I might get just a um, wire in an on-off switch down here somewhere. I don't know yet, but this is, this is her. She's finished. I did struggle putting in this last last light. I had to put a pin in here to hold it up. Um, it's a cotter pin for a car. <laughs> but hey, it works. So that is the finished product. Pretty cool little lamp.